Welcome to the France Van Cat interview. I'm Marae Dundas. Now, my guest today has had several hats. He's been senior policy on nutrition at the White House. He's helped front the first ladies' campaign tackling childhood obesity. But perhaps his most famous hat of all has been that of personal chef for the Obamas, cooking the family meal up to five nights per week. I'd like to join Sam Cass to the show. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Now, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the Obamas have become close friends of yours. Now, after six years, you've quit the White House. Yes. What I want to know is what did the presidential family like so much about your cooking? What could you do that others perhaps could not? <laughs> oh, I don't know. There's no magic there. I think uh, we, it really worked well because I cared about health as sort of the foundation of my cooking. And f particularly for the First Lady, when she was uh, a mom of two very young girls, this was very important as the, as the first presidential campaign was happening. And then the policy and politics around food and what we could do across the country was something that I had been working on and cared passionately about. So we made for a, a good team. Now, you grew up in Chicago, which is probably how you met the Obamas. That's exactly right. Um, but you trained in Austria. You spent some time in Mexico and New Zealand yeah. before going back to the US. Yeah. For you, what is the single biggest problem with the way Mer Americans are eating today? There's a lot of problems. It's not just one. I mean, I think if you break it down to the f fundamental core, we're eating too much, period. And we're eating too many empty calories, food that doesn't give us real nourishment. And I think we have to fundamentally uh, change how we're putting our food on our plates, make it smaller, make it healthier, um, and make it easier for families to do that. And I think right now it's just too hard for families to, to make those healthy choices. And if it's a second job for them to eat, just eat healthy, then we're not going to be successful. So we have a lot of work to do, but we're making a lot of progress for sure. Now, with the First Lady, Michelle Obama, you helped launch the Let's Move initiative. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that people are going to eat healthier, but particularly children. Yeah. Now, we still know today that there's more than one in three children are either overweight or obese. How do you measure if this, these programs work? Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, one, of, one in three of those kids are on track to have diabetes in their lifetime. So the, the implications of this health crisis are massive. Um, we, there's a lot of signs that we're making a lot of progress. Uh, we're seeing schools being completely transformed and, and we're increasing fruits and vegetables, getting the junk food out of schools, sugary drinks are out of schools. So that's a huge step forward. We're seeing kids eating better. We're seeing some trends where more fruits and vegetables are being consumed um, and portion sizes are starting to come down. So we're, we're, we're seeing some of those indicators. And in our youngest kids, we're seeing some declines in actual obesity rates in the very, very young kids. Now, the challenge will be sustaining that through their whole lives, uh, and that's the hard work. So we know that there are signs of progress, but there's a lot more work to do. Now, those changes in the schools have been quite controversial. You say more fruit, more vegetables, more whole grains. Yeah. It sounds relatively straightforward, but it hasn't been, has it? <laughs> no, you'd think it would be. We've had great debates and battles uh, around French fries and pizza and all sorts of things. And in fact, you know, part of what the change was was ensuring that we had to serve a fruit or vegetable with every meal. That's been a big battle where now many nutrition directors are trying to say, nah, just give them the option, which is a terrible idea because we know if you put it on the plate, the chances of kids eating it are much greater. <laughs> so there's been a lot of fights that uh, sometimes you scratch your head and wonder, how could we possibly be fighting over a healthier school lunch, uh, particularly given the state of affairs in, 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 in America? But you know, anytime you try to change the status quo, there's a lot of people who will resist that. And that's just part of it. And, and the other part of it is the culture. I mean, ultimately, what we're trying to do is shift the culture to value a healthy way of life more, right? And anytime you're, you know, working through a cultural shift, it's complicated. And uh, people identify themselves through what they eat. So it's a sensitive topic. So um, uh, it's not surprising that we've seen some of this. And it's, but we're, we're, we're on the right course, uh, and the, the, the key is not to turn back. There has been a, a serious amount of backlash, though, you might say. I mean, there were reports of uh, students boycotting the cafeterias, mm -hmm. more waste because they weren't eating the vegetables, mm -hmm. and then there was the t Twitter trend where people were posting what they were describing as unappetising yeah. meals on yeah. Facebook with, thanks, Michelle Obama. Yeah. You're a close friend of Michelle's. What's your advice when you th see things like this, th this kind of response? Yeah, well, when we, when we see that stuff, uh, it, we, we don't let us, that bother us at all. In fact, it's a sign that we're making a big impact. You know, look, kids, kids throwing away food in, in the lunchroom, <laughs> that's as old as time. Like, that's happened since the beginning of the program. Uh, so we're not worried about, about that. We want to limit waste because that's not good. Um, and there's a lot of great strategies that are helping with that problem. 
But, you know, kids complain about everything, and they come home and complain about math. And are we just going to say, okay, you don't like math, so don't worry, you don't have to take the math class? Like, of course not. So because some high school students are, are, are doing some things on Twitter, it's like what's important is that the youngest kids, those kids who are five and six who are going to school, they, it's all they know. Like, this is their new normal. And that's what keeps us going and, and knows that we're, we're on the right course. And so you can't get thrown off by some, some tweets. <laughs> Can we go back to the White House for a minute? Because you also ha- helped set up the vegetable garden mm-hmm. there, the largest in the property's history. Um, if I understand correctly, it's not certified organic, but there's no chemical um, fertis- fertilizers used or yeah. pesticides. Yeah. What was the message that you wanted in this garden? Because I guess the idea is that growing locally is good, but not everyone has that amount of space. Yeah, that's exactly right. We wanted to really showcase food, first and foremost, where it comes from, how it's grown, uh, what vegetables look like, and really try to elevate the importance of, uh, of good food and using the White House as a real platform to showcase this. But we also bring kids down there, so they plant with us each, each time there was a planting and harvest, and we cook right down there in front of all the press. And it was a really wonderful way to just showcase what engaging kids in this whole process can really do. And it was an, um, it's been an amazing journey. Um, we have a beehive, the first ever beehive on the White House grounds, which is amazing, a compost. So we have the whole picture, and really the First Lady wanted to use it as a tool to educate uh, kids and families. And it's been you know, just an amazing success, uh, and, and I think it's been kind of the foundation of all the work that we did. Now, some of the food from that garden is eaten inside the White House, but obviously not all of it. Are there any kind of other security checks around the food that comes into the White House? Is it, you know, safe to eat? Is it good to eat? Does someone test the president's food before? Yeah. It was like the number one question, like, are you like, who's the taster? It's exactly. like, we're the tasters. <laughs> we're tasting as we cook. And if I guess we fall over, then we know something's wrong. No, like the way that the, the basic way that it works is it's all anonymous. Like you don't know where the food's going. There's just some regular guys out there shopping. And so there's no real chance to cause any any trouble. Now, I know that you've been somewhat notoriously kind of quiet about what you cook for the Obamas. So I thought I might play a game if you'll you work with me here. <laughs> Go I'm going to pr- propose two foods and you can tell me which of those you'd be more likely to serve and why. Okay. Okay. So chicken <laughs> or beef? Let's start easy. Mm, both. Depends on the day. We love both. Okay. I can't choose between those. Okay. Ketchup or mayonnaise? Ketchup. We're Americans. What can I say? <laughs> and finally, broccoli or hot dogs? Keeping in mind that both of them have been mentioned as among the, the present popular foods. I've got to go with broccoli. I'm going to stay on message. Yeah. That's... Broccoli, I will say, is probably the, the favorite vegetable. So I can with confidence say that, although we love a good hot dog. But, but yeah, we're going with broccoli on that. <laughs> now, in the television series House of Cards, Kevin Spacey's character Frank Underwood has a, a love affair with barbecue ribs, you might say. It's a bit of a therapy mm. during difficult times. Mm-hmm. Does President Obama have a similar equivalent that kind of helps him? Mm, I don't know if he has, uses food as therapy. Uh, I don't think there's no. I don't think there's a therapy thing. Although, like he's known. You never to, caught him like eating out of a Nutella jar. Or no, it, that's a, he's he is the most disciplined person I have ever met. In fact, we joke, we tease him about you know his lack of doing anything like that. It's like, come on, don't you have something you want to just binge out on? Then it's nothing. Uh, so you know, he's known to go out for a hamburger run with if a like head of state comes in and they just go grab a burger. So that's like the closest thing I got. But no, he. I've never caught him doing anything like that. Really? No. Oh. I wish I had some a juicy story for you, <laughs> no, but I just don't. Right. It's, it's a sign that he is disciplined as he makes out to be. Yeah. Can you tell me what the last meal you made for them was when, in December, I believe it was? Uh, you know what? I honestly don't remember. I, 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 I don't remember. But it was, I'm sure it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Fitty, we can't try it. <laughs> now, you quit the White House to be with your new wife, MSNBC presenter Alex Wagner, in New York. What's yeah. the next step? for Sam Cass? Is it a book? Is it a new restaurant? Uh, the beans. <laughs> the beans. Uh, so I'm working on what those beans are to spill. Uh, first and foremost, I'm being a great husband or trying. So yeah. that's my what number one. What she like to that's eat? That's yeah. my number one job. She's a tough critic, let me tell you. Like, she, much tougher than the president. <laughs> I mean, uh, she's like, every time we'll critique, like, oh, this was okay. It's you like, wow, it. really? Honey? <laughs> my God. Uh, so I'm working on a, a lot of things. I, I'll do some stuff in media. Um, I'll, I'll probably do a book. 
and working with a lot of a lot of people in the business community who I think young there's so many young businesses cropping up to try to solve a lot of these problems that that we're facing. I mean, you know, you know, young 30 year olds have like grown up knowing that we have a problem and they're just trying to solve it. They're not worried about blaming or all, you know, there's a lot of this sort of finger pointing that goes on in these and they're just like, let's just fix it. You know, I'm going to start a business that can help families eat better in this way or use technology to make it easier. And I think that force is going to be really powerful over the next five to 10 years to, to push the work that we've been doing forward. So I want to help be that catalyst the, that continues to make it easier for families to live healthy. And now, just finally, you've been in France for two days. Um, what are your thoughts on the French cuisine since uh, you've been here? Oh, my God. I mean, I've been here many times, and it is, you know, one of the epicenters of food in the world and has just shaped how we all eat and think about food. And it's just been uh, just been amazing. Um, I'm always just so excited to be here, and I eat so much food. You eat I, differently here than back home? Well, yeah, just because I'm trying to eat as taste as many things as I possibly can, and I got to go to uh, to the restaurant Spring, where there's a guy from Chicago uh, who's you know well known here now, and they open up a restaurant. And I remember reading about him many many years ago, like wow, that guy's brave to go to Paris and open up a <laughs> restaurant. Uh, but so, uh, so I had a wonderful meal there. It's just it's just the best to be here, uh, and I'm always just humbled to to be able to taste the cuisine and 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 you know know all the great chefs that have helped. You know, not just the food here, but then those chefs went all over the world and certainly to America, and it's really helped shape how we understand our own cuisine. And some of the, even our greatest chefs got their influence when they came. So Alice Waters, a dear friend, you know, she's had a huge influence on America, but that really stemmed from her time here. And so it's always wonderful to come. I'd like to thank you for being here with us on the set on France Vancat, and I'd like to thank the viewers for joining us. Stay tuned to France Vancat, there's more news coming up.